Rina Bordeseler, working for Vestas. I'm policy specialist and working in the government relations department. It takes a lot of water to make uh, most forms of energy. Even low carbon energies can take more water than fossil fuel based energies. An exception is wind. Just focusing on the water intensities of the power generation, you can see that wind and solar PV are using no water, whereas natural gas or supercritical uh, pulverized coal, nuclear, consume substantial amounts of water. Actually, the US Department of Energy estimates that adding carbon capture and storage to uh, fossil fuel based uh, power generation will lead to wa increased water consumption by up to 90%, meaning up to 90% more water of already water-intensive power generation technologies. When we make today decisions on new power plants, these are decisions we are going to live with for the next decades. So if we note already today that in our watershed we are going to face water scarcity and we don't take the water consumption of the electricity generation into account, we are running into huge problems. Most climate change related uh, projections uh, forecast that areas that are already dry are going to get drier and areas and regions that are wet will get wetter. So we won't face a global drought, but drought in the places that are already water stressed will face a far huger water stress than today. You'll see that you have wind everywhere, more or less, where you have already today water stress or you will have water, uh, face water stress in the future. The US is one of the examples where you have already today a lot of water stress, essentially in the western part of the United States and this water stress is expected to grow to, uh, to uh, water scarcity. Having 20% wind in the US energy mix would lead to cumulative water savings of 4 trillion gallons of water by 2030, which is quite impressive. Because each megawatt hour of electricity produced by wind will lead to save even more than 2,000 liters of water.